Hi, everybody. Happy Sunday. Um, glad to be here on a Sunday. And uh, welcome back to all of you who are joining or are going to join, hopefully, <laughs> unless you're out busy, which is understandable because this is Sunday. Uh, the reason that I'm doing it a little earlier today is because after um, my video, then Chris Godinez, and I'll put a link in for her, her show's on every Sunday at noon on YouTube, and I will put that link in. Today she's talking about you can't heal it if you don't feel it. It's a great topic. So um, anyway, welcome, welcome all of you to Sunday. You know that's t-shirt day for me. I don't know why. It's really stupid and silly, but anyway, it is what it is. I want you all to have this song in your head now going through the rest of the day because it's a fantastic song, right? Right? We are family. I got all my sisters with me here, right? Sisterhood of survivors and thrivers and overcomers and those sisters who have maybe still back in the darkness and we're going to help pull you out, right? Throw those life preservers towards you so you can, so you can come on up where we are. Um, but we are all family here. Hello, everybody. Um, yes, we're all family here and that's why, and I put it in the, I put it in the, whatever you call it at the top there, as far as what we're talking about. And also this is a judgment free place, no victim blaming allowed, none, especially on yourselves. No, you're not going to do that anymore. You've been beaten up enough, right? So no more shame and blame on yourself. No. We don't want to do that. Um, so anyway, I hope you now have, well, I hope you like that song. It's a fantastic song. Um, by uh, uh, Sister Sledge. I believe it's sung by Sister Sledge. I don't know why I remembered that name. I don't even know if they had any other songs. I'm giving away my, um, anyway, definitely my age. Um, okay, so. Today, we have a topic that I have personal um, experience with. Well, I have personal experience, obviously, with all of my topics. Those are my dogs, because here's what's happening right now. The woman who's bringing the bones that are filled with, like, the pumpkin and the chew stuff and the duck feet that they like to chew on, she just dropped all that at the door. I don't have to answer it, because... I'll, I'll, I'll get it. Uh, but that's why they're going crazy, right? They want it now. Okay, where was I? Yes, the topic today that we're talking about, um, and I am going to kick this door close. There, kick the door close. Hey, that's what happens when this shit's live. I don't know what's going to happen. Okay. Breathe. I do have my essential oils. Today's topic: narcissist and stalking. They go. That's synonymous. Narcissist sees stalker. Narcissist stalker. They do that. That's what they do. It's it's included in the definition of narcissist. They're stalkers to whatever degree that is. Um, this is of all the topics when it comes to narcissists. This is the one that. Ooh boy, howdy, do I have a story to tell? Now. As I've, I've shared many times before to all of you who may be, you know, because I do share some pretty gory details, um, I want you all to know I'm in a good place. I wouldn't be sharing this stuff if I was not. So these are all scars. There's no open wounds here today about this topic. Um, so I'm good. That's why I can share everything. Plus, this morning... I did my yoga to Billy Squire, so I'm good. I'm good. I'm ready for this. The, the, one of the reasons today, especially, that my story is so important to share is twofold. First, it's important that I share my story so we are shedding light on a darkness, right, that um, when it comes to stalking, 
if you want to talk about stuff that's hidden and myths and how the court systems deal with it and oh my god it's just like one nightmare after another right so it's really important for all of us to share our stories every time i start talking my nose itches the second part of that is because my story and again, it's okay, it's okay, don't feel sorry for me, I'm here for you. My story does not have a happy ending when it comes to being stopped, okay? And what I mean by a happy ending is that no justice was served, uh, it stole a couple years of my life, um, and still to this day, I'm, I'm on a quest to, to change laws and change how we, how we view this. So in my case, um, things didn't turn out well, legally speaking, okay? And I had, I went through a lot. But here's the good news about this is that I'm here to share it with you so that whatever, maybe you're at the beginning of this or maybe it's something that might happen to you in the future, um, I'm going to share all, you know, the dark parts that happened to me in the in the in the hope that somehow they're going to be help helping you oh beth she's saying her itchy nose is a sign of stress um no mine is just because there's i don't know there's something in the arizona air the desert air today um but no i just want to assure all of you this does not stress me out this does not um Again, I'm emotionally detached from my experience. That's why I can talk about it. I'm here for you to ask those questions about this particular topic. Okay, what we're gonna start out first is just looking at stalking, and stalking includes cyber stalking, didn't used to. So back in the day, right, back in the, back in the day, my day, <laughs> Um, no, but seriously, even like 20 years ago, stalking looked much differently, and it was not as, uh, it didn't infiltrate a person's life as much as it does today because of the internet, right? So 20 years ago and before that, stalking was a physical act, right, where <clears throat> somebody might be checking your mail or taking, stealing your mail or casing your house or, um, you know, some um, some bitter ex uh, maybe following you around to your parties or whatever else. So there, there was a physical component that it was limited to, right? Because when you were in your house and locked the door, they didn't have access to, I mean, unless somehow they like tapped your phone, I guess, but even then it's just on the phone, right? So anyway, it was much more limited than it is today. Unfortunately, I'm here to tell you because I lived it, Stalking, cyber stalking, there's not a place you can hide that they can't get to you if they want to, if they're determined enough. And narcissists are oftentimes determined enough, as in my case. So my own house was not safe, right? Everything I did online, email, banking, anything I did online was not safe. In fact, this is how, trust me, I can talk about these people, so don't feel sorry for me. Um, I was actually on the front page of the Arizona Republic. I was, see, that's me. This is 2015. That's four years ago, right? Yeah. Um, because it was so vast, right? Because the, the the difference with why narcissists are stalkers and and again they can be doing this while you're in the relationship for example you can you can also look at it as you know they're very controlling and whatever else but it's stalking right let's just call it what it is you know if they're following you around if they show up places that you don't expect um, or they don't tell you or you find out later that they were watching you or you know, like when I was, um, when I was in the marriage, 
<clears throat> we had just moved into this humongous house we had built together, 10,000 square feet. And I was alone a lot of the times, and it was like three levels of just, you could get lost in the place, right? And when we first moved in, the, the downstairs, which was this huge, vast place, um, wasn't finished. But, but one day, I was on the middle floor, and I was having an internet problem. And I was all alone, and I don't know, I, at the time I didn't know anything about anything about modems and stuff like that. So I went downstairs to go in search of like the utility room. <laughs> we had just moved in, so uh, I didn't know the house very well yet. Um, I went in search of the utility room, and um, when I, I, so I was finding like the phone line and stuff like that, and, um, and wouldn't you know, there's a tape recorder there on the wall. Like, an, you know, the old-fashioned tape recorders, right? Where you just put a cassette tape in. So I pushed rewind, and then I pushed play. And he had been recording all my, and at the time, I didn't have a cell phone. Um, so he had been recording all my landline calls, which I don't even know how he didn't fall asleep listening to him because it was really just to my mom. Um, but things like that, I was, I was kind of used to, um, no, I, no, that's not true. I was used to it. It was a little, uh, disconcerting. Um, it, it did seem kind of creepy to me at the time, but you have to understand I was in a mental place where I had been so conditioned to normalize these things, you know, like when he went into my email and changed the password when I was out of town. Um, so I didn't have access to it, but he did. Um, or when he would intercept, this is when I left him the first time. He would intercept, and I still, um, hey, Carl, thank you. Um, and I, um, uh, so, so when I had left him the first time, um, he would intercept my Facebook messages. I was just going to say, I still don't know to this day how he did that. But I later, when I went back and I went through his office, I found copies that he had printed out of. So he had somehow intercepted where I would message somebody and that person would not get the message. and he, But he would get it, right, and copy it out. And That's just the beginning. That's just the tip of the iceberg. This is stuff that was happening when I was with him, right? There's something about, because narcissists are so controlling and they look at you like, almost like, well, in many cases, your property, right? I have a woman who I'm working with now. She's left him. She's in the divorce process. And yet he's still constantly saying things to her like, you're my woman and you're still my wife, even though they're separated and she's they're getting a divorce and whatever else, right? You know, he's just like, you're mine, you know, as though we're back in the 1890s again or something when women were actually <laughs> kind of property. Um, there's something that, you know, in a, let's just say that in, again, if there's a normal thing, is there's, if there's such a thing as a normal divorce, right, between two people who, for whatever reason, decide to part ways separate. Even if there may be anger and bitterness and stuff like that, if somebody cheated or whatever else, but um, in a normal divorce, and then and then this is also a um, you know common thing that you hear is that one or both people will pick up with somebody else, start a relationship, and leave the other person behind. They'll they'll just kind of leave their ex alone, right? So you hear that a lot. I used to I used to have people tell me that when it's like oh when he finds somebody else then he'll leave you alone. No 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 narcissists don't do that. No they don't. They don't just leave you alone. And by the way he had already found somebody. That's why I left him in the first place, right? Because he had replaced me. Um. So so don't believe that when 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 it comes to narcissists. No they don't leave you alone. They're very invested in knowing everything that you're doing, um, and going to all sorts of lengths to get that information. So I, I will give you some tips, uh, you know, in, in a in a bit. Yes, Carl, we are family. We are class of 86, for sure. 
Um, but I will give you some, some tips because again, I'm using my story of all the mistakes that I made or just things, all the closed doors that I had to kick open and stuff like that. Just my experience to help you, um, sort of be more aware and be able to navigate, um, around that, uh, these, these issues. So the problem with stalking may, let's talk about cyber stalking, right? Is that, well, there's many problems. Um, a main problem is that laws and the states and the criminal justice system